Well, now we're ready to do some flux core welding. But what is flux core welding? Well, you remember the gas that comes out the hard wire? What does it do? It keeps our weld clear. It gets rid of the oxidization, gets rid of the oxygen. We don't get that nitrogen jumping in there and giving us Swiss cheese. Well, the guys out in the field wanted to use the same system. Why pack a lot of welding rod around when I can just get a spool of wire and I can just pour wire? Great idea. So they take this machine out, they go out there and they try it. Works great until the wind blows. So for a nice, bright, sunny day with no wind, it'll work. But if there's any breeze at all going on, forget it. So what they did is they went back to the drawing boards. Somebody came up with the idea of putting a flux inside this hollow tube and made a spool of wire that way. Well, that's what we call flux welding. So what does it do? As the arc go out, go, comes out and forms, the flux creates this gas that keeps in, the weld shielded so that we don't have our Swiss cheese, we don't have our porosity. Okay, now, in order to do some flux core welding, I'm going to switch this machine over. Right now I have the hardcore wire in there. I'm going to take it out, show you how to switch it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to cut this wire. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it into one of these little side holes here because otherwise this thing is going to turn into a banana. And I'm going to do it on the machine, even though it looks a little more complicated here. It's going to be easier than taking it off and trying to hang onto that wire, which is going to start whipping around like a little snake. All right, we just bend this thing over like that. That wire won't move. Now, we can take the wire off, same way I put it on. I'm going to put my flux core wire in. All right. Take my clamp off. Now, in order to get the wire out, pretty simple. Just grab it and pull. Just take the wire out. Looks like a waste, but the time you save from trying to wind it back on a spool will pay for itself. All right. Now, get this wire bundled up. Get it out of your way. All right. Now, what we got to do, I got to put my glasses on so I can see. Then we'll unwind our wire here. This thing should go fairly quickly. Trim my wire off so that it'll feed through my guide rolls nice and easy. Now feed that into my guide rolls, into my guide liner. In we go. All right, now I'm using 030 wire, same size we used last time, so I won't have to change my rolls around. If I have to change the rolls, I just take it out on this particular machine, make a quarter turn, and I'm back in business. I want to feed enough wire in to get from this short liner that's about this long into the liner of my gun. All right, bring it down. My tension should be about the same. One thing we got to do, we got to change the polarity. When we're doing flux core, we're going to use DC straight. When we're doing hard wire, we're going to use DC reverse. So I need to change the positive and negative terminals. And Miller has made it very easy for us. We just spin the nuts off and reverse the two wires. Pull this off. It'll take me two fingers. Get it out of the way. Now remember, when you put your hands in the machine, always have it turned off and unplugged. Switch the wire over. Snug it up by hand. Switch the other wire. So now I'm going to be in DC straight. If I don't, you'll be able to weld, but you'll have so many BBs that you'll spend all your time 
knocking the BBs off. And they will be big BBs, too. All right. Now I'm all set. I've got to turn my machine on. I've plugged myself back in. Let me turn my machine on. Then I'm going to turn the wire on. I want a nice big loop in the wire. Okay. Now, I've got some wire fed into the liner, so I know I'm into the liner. I'm going to take my nozzle off. I don't want to run the wire all the way up, because it'll hit the inside of this uh, tip. Maybe it'll come through. 90% of the time, maybe 99% of the time it won't. It'll bird nest the wire. It'll just stop it. So let me take my tip off. This is also a good time to check your tip. Make sure that your tip is in good shape. This happens to be a brand new tip. All right, now I'll continue feeding the wire until it comes up through the diffuser. Ah, froze. Guess what? That'll happen sometimes. So what you got to do when that happens, release, back your wire up a little. Reclamp. And sometimes you'll have to feed your gun a little bit. There we go, okay? So what happens is, this wire as it's coming out, because it's got, may get kinked, will cause it to jam up. No big deal. Cut your wire off, slip your uh, contact tip back on, hand tighten it all the way up, and take your handy dandy tool or pair of ice grips, pair of pliers, make sure it's cinched. This is a contact tip. That wire is going to contact when it goes down and hits the workpiece between the tip and the workpiece. It's just the same as it was with the hard wire. That's how we make our contact. If this is loose, we're going to get some looseness. We're going to have a little resistance. We're going to have a little problem with our weld. I don't need that. Okay, very simple situation. Now, the other thing is we don't have any gas to shield, so we don't use this nozzle. Now, there are other machines, like a Lincoln machine, same version. It'll have a little cover that they make to protect the diffuser. Miller decided they didn't need it doesn't matter. What's going to happen is we're going to get an arc and we're going to start welding. 